Let's see what everybody says over on Twitter. You want to have some fun? Mm-hmm. I posted this earlier. One of We got the super chat during the live stream. Louder for the chuckleheads in the back who can't hear. Why don't you read this out to everybody? Christoph says he upgraded from a 5900X to a 5950X. I would have upgraded to the 5950X directly, but I was too tired of my 7700K to wait for stock in the Division 2. Oh, to wait to wait for stock. He, he left a period out. Yeah. In the division in the division two, I saw a decent improvement in smoothness. You are right, 16 cores is not nuts. Today's video was brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TechDeals. More details at the end of the video. And what did I say up at the top? Louder for the chuckleheads in the back who cannot hear it. 16 cores is not overkill. Now let's see what everybody replied to me. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and read that. Ironically, I have a 7700K right now with Radeon 7 and 16 gigs of RAM. Saving for a 5900X with 32 gigs of RAM with a two terabyte. Saving for, yeah. <laughs> You're not a robot. Hey, he responded. That deserves a like. Um, why do people not believe this? Everybody keeps saying, oh, six cores is enough. Eight cores is enough. It is enough. Six cores is all you need for gaming. That 16 core CPU is completely irrelevant to any gamer of any kind. Six cores will run games. You don't need 16 cores, but it will use the... Six cores will walk the game. 16 cores will run the game full sprint down the line, butter smooth. With fireworks. People just, they just don't want to believe it all. There's, there's no way. There's no way. I saw a benchmark. I saw a benchmark. You saw a benchmark. I saw a bench, I saw an FPS chart. They just don't Last want... Last stream, you showed a benchmark chart that was kind of not accurate. Uh, an eye. Did did you did you guys see the last bench benchmark chart I showed on a previous stream? Um, in fact, I tweeted it. I'm scrolling. I was, I was in the live stream. Well, that's or part of it, like contributing. Here we go. Did you guys did you guys all catch this? <laughs> this tickled Tech Deal's funny bone. Or the they, Tech Power Up published a benchmark. Now this was not one game. This was an average of all the games they tested across multiple games. The i5 9400F beat the Ryzen 7 3800X. Sure, of course it did. Uh, how many are you going to trade in your Ryzen 7 3800? Actually, XT. The XT makes it faster. Well, but it is. It's, 200 megahertz, 100 megahertz oh. faster. Okay. That's about 4.5 gigahertz all core turbo on the on the 3800X T. Okay. It's 4.2 on the 3700X, 4.4 on the 3800X, and 4.5 on the 3800X T. And an and a six core six thread i5 9400F locked chip is which runs at 3.8. I I don't believe that for two seconds. Oh, I'm sure they ran tests that came up with that result. These are average frame rates in clean benchmarks on clean test benches in precise, perfect conditions with nothing else going on. This is everything wrong with benchmarks. So that means that the games were not using all 16 threads for the games. This means they were running scripted, repeatable benchmarks that weren't really representative of the games. And they're showing average performance, not 1% lows and not frame times. That too. 
Hello. Hello. We're reusing our things from two days ago, talking oh, about this good. nonsense. Yeah, that's good. Um, by the way, people just do not want to believe it because I tweeted the the thing about the fifty nine hundred uh, about the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Is there some chuckleheads? Wait. So he's saying that going, he saw improvement, and Christoph actually replied to this. That's exactly what I said. Hmm. Either you're running something intense, or it's a placebo. They just they can't believe it. It's like, but that can't be right. What if it is? What if it is? But I saw a chart. <laughs> well, you know what, you That's how we that ended chart. up on the. We saw a benchmark <laughs> showing. Pieces uh, of paper are good for toilet paper. Yeah, I mean, it's just. I, I understand why people say this because they've watched too many charts. They've seen too many benchmarks that just, well, I mean, here's another thing that I, that I did. Um, sorry, I'll make y'all dizzy as I scroll. We scroll. Uh, yes, you can multitask better with the eight core 16 thread. Now take a, take, take a look at this. Well, this is lovely. Now this was a non-clean PC that had stuff running in the background versus clean test benches. That is the Shadow of the Tomb Raider built-in benchmark on a Ryzen 5 2400G. Now the frame rate here real time is 36 with an average of 53 and a 1% low of 16. Mm -hmm. This is the frame time graph. That's oh. horrible. Oh. You should have put like the clean and the non-clean test benches side by side. I did. Oh. That's a clean. Oh. Oh. Look at the look at the pink chart. I see now. 79-33 versus 53 and 16. By the way, several people were asking what was going on. And I actually posted it down here somewhere. Oh, ambulance. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, where was it? Oh, you know, I posted it over on um, Discord. Um, on the channel in the community tab. Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw that. Because, yeah, I posted it over. Here's the community tab. I did another one here. This was, uh, I didn't tweet this. Call of Duty. Um, Cold War on the 2400G. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't bad. I mean, look at the frame time graph, but look at the 1%. Five. You're not seeing it here. It's fine until it isn't. Notice that we're completely um, CPU bottlenecked. Even though we're only at 64% on the CPU, because remember we have hyperthreading, right. SMT, not Intel, I know, but the 77, it was, it was playable. And this was not Warzone, mind you. This was just regular multiplayer. This is a fairly confined map. This was called the Cold War multiplayer. Just a few people on each side. It was playable. I wouldn't want to. There were too many hitches. Smoke got thrown. Explosions. Grenades went off. It would... It just... You play, and then... Here's the problem. It hitches right when you're trying to shoot the bad guy. It hitches during the important parts of the gameplay. Yeah. Um, that is a ridiculous frame time graph. <laughs> well, yeah. Look at the poor CPU being fully utilized. Sweet. It's called concussion uh, plus. Somebody was asking. Um. I I answered somebody. You did what? I answered them. They said, "What are you running in the background?" Here we go. Actually, I posted this. This was two days ago. Uh, Battle.net was downloading Cold War in the background, and Origin was downloading Star Wars Battlefront 2, and that's it. When I did the uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider test. So they didn't have 27 things running. This was not my personal machine at home. I did not have Backblaze running. I did not have seven things syncing, OneDrive. The only thing running on this machine besides this benchmark was Battle.net was downloading Cold War, and Origin was running... Uh, downloading Star Wars Battlefront 2. And the fact that Windows exists. Windows also uses some of your CPU and GPU. So... Just a little bit. But my point is, the difference between this 
and this was just background downloads. Now that is why you get an eight core CPU. No, the reason why you get a 16 core CPU is because I was not running OneDrive, G Drive, Backblaze, I didn't have Discord open, I wasn't watching a YouTube video. No. And to be clear, that's still my test bench. All I did was just start two game downloads. It's not like I, I took a real dirty machine. It's that's it's the same computer. Ian says the downloads were being decrypted, they were coming through. They can take what he transmitted. You know, actually, um Battle.net is really good about system resources on downloads. It's not bad. Because Battle.net just gives you the whole original file. It's not compressed like Steam. Steam downloads can be brutal. Origin is hit and miss, depending on the game. But Battle.net's not bad. Some games, like World of Warships downloads are just stupid. Oh, they're, they're awful. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs.